The Nukor was always a cool weapon, but the problem with it was that it was a little bit too niche, you needed specific circumstances in order for the Nukor to be viable. The only question that remains is that, can the Kuva version correct this fault? Hey guys, welcome back, as always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be diving deeper into this secondary weapon. As per the usual, I'm gonna have a couple of builds laid out. Something cheap, something affordable that mostly any player can build, but of course we also have the quote-unquote endgame setup with a Riven. That said though, please keep in mind that my builds and guides usually take a new player friendly approach. That's because there's a lot of info here and I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So in case you're a veteran and you already know most of this stuff, please bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Kuva Nukor. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of free shots. Now the Kuva Nukor is basically the Nukor but greatly improved my friends. You got 29 meters worth of range and the weapon beam effect no longer is that microwave circle thing which was a bit confusing to be honest. So that's great. The 29 meter worth of range means that you are not forced to use ruinous extension. Now you can do that if you so desire but from my point of view that is more than enough. 26 meter till the target I'm gonna be hitting it and as you can see the beam will be chaining two additional enemies. Speaking of beams this is a beam weapon so it will start off at 30% of its damage when you pull the trigger, quickly ramping up to 100% over the course of 0.6 seconds. After you stop firing for 2 seconds, it will ramp down to the base 30% over the course of 0.8 seconds. So bear that one in mind. It's a bit of a trick with beam weapons. Honestly, you're not gonna feel any difference in gameplay. Let's talk about that chain though, that's pretty interesting isn't it? So how much damage does it deal? A pretty good amount of damage, there is a formula to calculate over on the wiki and the damage depends on what number the chain is. For example, chain number 1 will be doing more damage than chain number 2, which will be doing more damage than chain number 3, which you get it, right? Now the formula on the wiki, let's just say I'm not convinced it's the correct formula and leave it at that. The range of the chain, 10 meters my friends, 10 meters which is absolutely huge. Now. I need to clear up punch through again because there seems to be some confusion about it. If I put on punch through, bro, that means more chains. Yes, no, no, it does not. God damn it, for the last freaking time. No, it does not. Let's go with punch through. Now, the argument that I saw was like, look, I'm sh shooting through all these targets, and look, man, now all of them have the proc on them, so I hit all of them. Yay, punch through more chain. No, because what you're doing with punch through right now is hitting one. Two, three, four with the main beam, and these are just the chains on the right side, the left side. Okay, these are just the chain. A correct test would be this. I'm hitting two of these targets with my main beam, and let's see if I get that to chain on everybody. <gasps> no! One, two, three, four. What do you know? Punch through does not mean you're getting multiple chains, and let that be the end of that. Fire rate on this one is pretty solid, the range is fantastic, I absolutely love it, and to be honest, it's a pretty easy weapon to play with, but it does have one usability issue, though, the ammo. If you're gonna put on fire rate on this one, and I urge you to do so because it's, it is fantastic, you're gonna have some ammo issues, so use something like an ammo mutation or drop yourself some pads, it's really not that big of a deal. Now let's compare with the normal new core. In case I missed any functionality things, I'll get back to them later. Accuracy 100, fantastic, because we are gonna be using Magnum Force. By the way, my new core is a 60%, right here boys, okay, a 60% toxin roll. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Critical chance and critical damage. Ah, ah, isn't this gonna be an uncomfortable conversation? <laughs> you guys are not gonna like me very much, I apologize, I'm sorry. Critical chance, 7% versus 3%. Mm. Bad and worst. <laughs> <laughs> Critical multiplier, the highest in the game, 5.0x. That was the trademark of the new core. Super high critical multiplier, but no critical chance. What are we gonna do? Fire rate of 10, fantastic. Magazine of 77, a lot better. Noise alarming, reload of 2 seconds, which is decent. It's not fantastic, but it's decent. Look at the status chance, 50% versus 29%, which is sky high. The damage is 21 versus 22, and you're gonna say, ha, they nerfed the damage. Now... It's not just one damage. Look at it in percentages, okay, when you want to see nerfs and buffs. It's, it gives you a more clearer picture. But keep in mind that this is a Kuva weapon. So if, because this is a Kuva weapon, you're going to be getting your bonus elemental damage based on your progenitor. My recommendation, Toxin. Go for Toxin. This is a 60% Toxin roll. So I got 12.3 extra Toxin damage on this one as a base. 
Being a Kuva weapon, that means we can get to mod capacity 80 out of 80, which is absolutely huge. Now, you don't need to trouble yourself that much, but if you want to get every single mastery point out of the weapon, you're gonna have to. So, there's that. This one acts like the Parasesis. Now, don't forget to plug in your Orokin Catalyst. This will send your weapon from 40 out of 40 to 80 out of 80. You can farm this one from Nightwave. You can get it from the Daily Sortie. You can pay 20 plat to have one installed. Mm -hmm. That's enough, right? Normally, this is when we talk about a standard build, but we're not gonna do that. What we're gonna be doing is talking about critical chance, critical damage, multipliers, and is it worth to put critical chance on the new core? First of all, I got a detailed build guide on critical chance, critical damage, multipliers, how they apply in Warframe, link the cards right now. But for now, let's just tailor that conversation to the new core if you don't wanna watch that whole thing. Is it worth using critical chance and critical damage on the new core? If you have outside buffs such as Arcane Avenger, Kavat buff or perhaps Harrow, we're talking about critical chance bonus additive after effects, then just use critical damage on your new core. That would be fantastic because again, the allure of this weapon is the highest critical multiplier in the game and with prime target cracker on, it goes to 10.5x. But do you use prime pistol gambit? That's the question. Let me get one thing out of the way really quick though. If you do not have the prime mods, if this is all you got, you do not use pistol gambit on the nuke or I'm sorry, it's simply not worth it because of the low base 7% critical chance. If it was 10%, then yeah, it would have been worth as it is not really. So do you use Prime Pistol Gambit? And the, well, here's the thing. If you use Prime Pistol Gambit, then you gotta use Prime Target Cracker in your build, right? If you go for critical chance, you gotta go for critical damage. And long story short, it's barely worth it. And I'm talking about very, very barely worth it. If you don't have the Prime mods, if you don't have them fully maxed out, then just don't use them on the new core. Don't worry, the difference in build performance is minute and I will demonstrate that in actual gameplay. You might even argue, what about Riven, dude? I got a Riven, then I use them, right? Well, if you got a critical chance Riven, try to flip the situation in your own mind just to understand exactly what you are gaining and what you are giving up. How much critical chance can you have on your new core Riven, given the base Riven disposition of only 3 out of 5? Let's say that with that one, you can get to, I don't know, 35-ish percent critical chance on the new core, and Hydraulic Crossers is a major no-no, by the way. No, this is just doubling down on stupid. No. Let's say you got 35% with a critical multiplier or something like 12 or 14. In that case, definitely it is worth it, but think about it like this. You got a 65% chance on each and every single damage tick for all of your critical chance and critical damage mods on your build to be 100% worthless. So bear that one in mind. <sighs> and with that out of the way, let's jump into a standard build. And we got a whole lot of damage with Hornet Strike and Magnum Force Multi-Shot with Battle Diffusion Lethal Torrent and a whole lot of Fire Rate with Lethal Torrent and Gunslinger. Next we're gonna be talking about Anemic Agility. I can hear it, use Anemic Agility instead of Gunslinger. No. And I'll tell you why. The damage proposition is like this. Do you want 18% fire rate at the cost of 15% damage? In my case in particular, not really. This will help me overstrip if I go like this. Again, guys, this is not the same as Vile Acceleration versus Speed Trigger. Then you have 30% fire rate at the cost of 15% damage. This is only 18% fire rate for 15% damage. My recommendation to you, go with Gunslinger. We got 290 mods, the Convulsion and Pathogen rounds, which will be forming corrosive and increasing overall to 986.1 corrosive on the weapon. And we also have Heated Charge. No 6060 mods, no, again, in my case, going for the 6060 mods will actually yield a higher kill time. That's not what I want. I want a lower kill time because it will mean more overstrip on my targets, as we are going to be shooting Corrupted Heavy Goons level 120. If that critical chance, believe it or not, if the critical chance on this one would have been 10%, not more, 10%, it would have been absolutely insane. Now, that's not to say that the weapon is not insane. Let me demonstrate with the standard no critical chance, critical damage build on these Corrupted Heavy Goons level 120. And then we're going to be switching it up just a little bit. Straight for headshots, my friends. Take a look at that. Take a look at that. That is absolutely freaking fantastic. And again, there's no critical chance or critical damage here. You see, I do got a couple of targets on overstrip right now. Not something terrible, but again, I did manage to reduce the overstrip thanks to the 90 mods instead of the 60, 60 mods. As you can see, my friends, this weapon is an absolute beast and I highly recommend it. Get yourself one. My recommendation for a progenitor would be to go with Toxin. So I'll go with Saren and I think Ivara is also a Toxin progenitor, but you might want to look that one up. Enough about that. Let's go critical chance and critical damage. Again, this is the cheapo build. 
This is essentially what I recommend if you don't have any fancy mods. Again, none of these mods are expensive or hard to get. Magnum Force, you can get it by doing Volt Runs. Link the cards right now if you don't know how to do Volt Runs. Now, Critical Chance and Critical Damage, instead of what per se? Well, with Critical Chance and Critical Damage on the weapon, I'm no longer gonna need that hidden charge. So we're gonna go like this and like this. And you will see the weapon performs a little bit better. Do not take off Lethal Tor and do not take off Gunslinger on this weapon. It would be a huge DPS loss. Don't do it. For the love of God, don't do it. Straight for headshots again. You can count ammo if you want to make like a direct comparison and all whatnot, but certain times you will get the critical chance one to be better and other times the without critical chance one to be better. Again, it's slightly, ever so slightly better than before. I think actually it came out a little bit worse on this one, but I guess my ammo management could have been a little bit better. So as you can see, my friends, there's... Jack all between using crit and not using crit on this weapon. So bear that one in mind. That, uh, that's again without taking into account outside buffs. Enough about that, let's jump into my Riven setup. Now this one is a loner from a friend. Thank you so much, Mikhail. I appreciate you, buddy. Multi-shot damage and critical damage. And we're gonna have to talk about the ideal Nuko Riven. And that's a bit of a touchy-feely kind of subject, right? Because the guys with critical chance will say, you gotta have critical chance on your Riven. No, you do not. From my humble point of view, the ideal Nuko Riven, without taking into, into account any outside buffs, will be damage, multi-shot, and a harmless negative. Sorry. Now we're going to be testing out the weapon like this. I think my critical multiplier is at 13.8, but again, my critical chance is at 20.1. Same Corrupted Heavy Goons, level 120 as before. Let's see what the weapon can do. Of course, it will be a lot better than before. Take a look at that. Absolutely freaking hilarious, man. How fast this weapon is fully capable of annihilating these high-level targets. And of course, more damage, more multi-shot will also mean uh, less overstrip because you are killing them faster. Now, it's finally time, my friends, to make this weapon go absolutely freaking nuclear. But for that, since we are taking into account Warframe buffs, we no longer need Prime Pistol Gambit. Again, it's a very small buff. We're going to get our critical chance from outside sources. And instead of that, what we're going to be using is more elemental on the weapon, another 90% mod. We can even actually, with the critical chance increase from outside, then we can go for the 60-60 mods. Let's go for it. Since we will be getting bonus additive after critical chance effects, we will no longer run into overstrip issues, so we can finally renounce the 90 mods and go for the 60. 60 mods, like Sue. Now, let's talk about buffs. Harrow, of course, I mean, come on, Harrow. Ideally, you would want to go for something like, I'm going to change the build to corrosive projection, because again, we are going to be fighting Grenier targets, heavily armored targets, and we're going to go with double arcane Avengers. Now, let's think about it for a second. My weapon has 7% critical chance right now since I took off the critical chance mod. Harrow is going to give me 200% on headshot and Avenger another 60, okay? So, I'm going to 267. And this should be absolutely fantastic. This is when this weapon truly shines, when you can get critical chance from outside sources. We're going to max out the targets. I can do 150. So, here we go, my friends. It's finally time to go all out with the Kuva Nukor. Activating Harrow's fourth ability so I can mitigate damage and get my critical chance on and we can also use his second ability. Harrow's second ability is a little bit forgotten. It gives you fire rate and reload speed. It's fantastic, do go for it. Now my friends, in about two seconds you will see the Kuva Nukor go absolutely nuclear. I'm gonna tap it, light, light tap. <laughs> Of course, you're gonna have to go for headshots, but take a look, my friends. This is absolutely freaking hilarious. You can pause the video and try to read the damage numbers. This is when this weapon shines. It's the same time the normal version of the new core shines. And again, if you have the Prime Pistol Gambit and Prime Target Cracker, you can go for them. The damage difference, however, the performance difference, better said, will be minute. So bear that one in mind. As always, my name is Bruno Lazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. If you got any sorts of feedback for me, I would love to read it in the comment section down below. And keep in mind, my friends, I just offer you suggestions on builds based on my calculations and my spreadsheets. You don't need to follow along 100% of the time. Make your own builds, whatever you like playing in Warframe. Because at the end of the day, well, the point is to have fun, isn't it? I'll see you guys in the next one.